Welcome to Nebraska Farmcast, a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm Ryan Evans. USDA's March 30th Prospective Plantings Report revealed expected decreases in the amount of corn acreage being planted this year, which could have implications for cattle feeders across the country. Dr. Elliot Dennis, Assistant Professor and Livestock Marketing Economist in the Department of Agricultural Economics here at UNL, has a new analysis reacting to the report, which focuses on feed availability, cost of gain, and manure as a potential source of feedlot revenue. He's here now. Elliot, thanks for joining me. So what did the new prospective plantings report reveal and what has been the reaction in the cattle production industry? Yeah, so there's really been uh, really two things that we learned. First, that the corn acreage was going to go down substantially. um, And this was kind of a surprise to the market because we thought, well, given where corn prices are at, extremely high, we'd see a lot more rotation into corn. Uh, actually, we almost had a direct opposite. We had reduced corn acres, and all of that pretty much went into soybean acres. Um, and so a lot of people were, you know, questioning, well, why did we see this? And the first, I mean, there was really two ideas of why we were seeing that. And the first was this input supply risk that there's just a lot of people who can't get fertilizer, particular nitrogen, even if they've pre-purchased it. Um, there's some people who are saying that, you know, yeah, you purchase it, but you might not be able to get it. Um, and so that's going to be a concern. The this, this second is that really crop rotation considerations. And so we had a lot, uh, a similar situation last year, we had a lot more rotation into corn. And so people who are in their crop rotations, trying to manage disease and soil fertility, um, you know, there's maybe some two strong barriers why people would actually rotate into soybeans. Um, some people would say that, you know, we're actually going to see you know, the corn acreage come up a little bit, and that's probably partially true. Um, and so really when we talk about, you know, corn, the reason why the cattle market watches corn is it's the primary input into two of the most common feed sources here in Nebraska. The first is just strict corn, and the second is distiller's grains. Um, currently, ethanol um, are pretty profitable, um, or at least historically have been. And even with these higher corn prices, they're still eking a profit, although some of them would say that um, they're actually actually running at a deficit right now. So both of those would affect both corn supply going into the fall and also distiller grain availability. And when you're talking about profitability for feedlots, can you explain first what cost of gain is and then uh, what this year's market could mean for profits for, for feedlots and then downstream for producers? Yeah, so... Yeah, we often calculate what's called cost of gain, and this is if we are to put in all of those costs that would uh, basically allow us to reach a final weight. Um, And so this gives us an idea of when we see that number, uh, how can we compare it to what the market's willing to to pay us at the end? So, uh, for instance, if the market uh, currently the uh, live cattle board might be trading at 140, if it costs us 125 um, on the gain per hundred weight, then we can see, oh, there's profits to be made. Um, Often when we place cattle, we're placing with expectations of what cost of gain is going to be. And then we see what that cost of gain eventually is at the end, um, depending upon, you know, the ultimate performance of the cattle. So the average daily gain, how, how many pounds of weight they gain per day, and then also their feed conversion. And that's uh, basically a ratio of how much pounds of feed uh, is required to gain one pound of of weight on the animal. And so these two numbers, you know, animal performance is variable. And so ultimately that cost of gain can fluctuate, but the cost of gain at placement gives us a good idea of, you know, if, if there are incentives to be had or profits to be made, then we can, we'll continue to see placements mainly around different weights. Um, and so looking at the really cost of gain for feed yards um, over the last, uh, really last four or five months, what we've been really seeing using the Kansas State focus on feedlot is those expected costs of gains are in the 124 to 128 range per hundred weight. Is that higher this year than it has been? Yeah, uh, significantly higher. When we were talking, uh, even last year, we were in the 102 to 106 range, um, just really showing that uh, these higher grain uh, corn prices in particular are uh, really squeezing out what we would 
historically say is pretty large profits to be made. So you mentioned price and availability issues in the fertilizer market, and we've heard a lot about substituting manure on cropping operations. Uh, is there an opportunity here then for feedlots to add revenue? Yeah, and so I'd say most uh, feedlots that I'm familiar with at least have the available or potential to sell this and even some currently engaged. Normally it's within a 10 mile radius of their feedlot that they're uh, willing to sell manure to. Um, there are some you know, potential difficulties between feedlots and selling them to crop producers. Um, sometimes crop producers might, or feedlots perceive that sometimes crop producers maybe discount the manure going out, but then they wanna sell the silage back in at a premium. Um, and so I think when we're talking about the availability switch in uh, or availability of manure as a substitute for, uh, for fertilizer, absolutely. And, and some of those ranges that uh, have been kind of given are somewhere in the dollar of uh, about $4 per hundredweight um, is the value of that manure uh, back to the operation. So uh, given current fertilizer uh, price levels. So I do think it is kind of a, an opportunity for a win-win situation for crop producers who are looking for um, fertilizer or an alternative to fertilizer and, and also feedlots who are looking to always increase profitability. So the corn growing season is just getting started. What are you keeping your eye on for uh, the rest of the year here? So I think uh, the, in a couple months we'll actually get actual planting numbers, and so there we'll have a pretty good idea of you know, what the actual planting of corn was. And then as we progress through the year, of course, we're going to be looking at growth and uh, crop progress. And ultimately that, but once we kind of know acreage, we can have kind of an estimate for yield. Um, and generally we have a pretty uh, increasing uh, trend on yield. And so um, I'm really looking for intentions on that. And the other thing I'm, I'm really watching for is uh, ethanol grinding. Um, and making sure that the ethanol uh, production continues to keep pace. We're going into summer where a lot of people tend to drive, but we're also at really historical high gas prices. And so that's going to compress some of people's desire. And so then you have um, ethanol producers who are potentially facing reduced demand for, uh, for ethanol because of lower gasoline or people not driving as much, and but also higher corn prices, and you can see maybe a, high, a little bit higher distilled grains prices. And so those are the two things that I'll, I'll really be watching over the next several months. Great. Well, that is Elliot Dennis, Assistant Professor and Livestock Marketing Economist here with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. You can find an analysis that he has written on what we've been discussing here in this episode. It's on our website for the Center for Ag Profitability at cap.unl.edu. Thanks, Elliot. Yeah, thanks for having me. Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.